Hi, Amanda. Here's Amanda. Hi. Hi. Here's Amanda Reddy, and she will be one of our fabulous workshop moderators at the Festival of Doers. And Amanda is going to be speaking about how you need to become very strong in yourself and self-aware um, in order to help others. But before we dive into that, um, Amanda, could you please um, just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Amanda Reddy. I'm an originally from Alabama. I'm living in the New York area now. So that is why I have a strong Southern accent. I'm a licensed mental health therapist, and I'm also the founder and director of Ready to Empower, which is an organization that helps um, different communities and internationally women to help them become self-reliant. Oh, that's so wonderful. Um, one core theme um, of Festival of Doers is obviously living the life to your own terms and defining your bigger life. So basically defining your own kind of success. And this might mm -hmm. mean, you know, doing the work you love, making a very positive impact to the planet or people around you um, and creating a balanced lifestyle. Could you please um, define how you, what success means to you? For me, I think success means that I have freedom. I have a freedom of choice. So what I have based my own personal life around is that I have the ability to make decisions and go in a direction in my life that is my journey. And so for me, I would say my goal, and even when I'm helping others or going places, is saying make yourself where you have choices so that it gives you freedom and that you're not just surviving in life, but you're, you're living what you want to live. So that's always been my vision of success. That, that is so important. It's so easy to kind of, uh, with your choices, get yourself into the corner and uh, feels that mm -hmm. there is no options. But there is right. always more options than what we think. Um, could you talk me through a little bit about the journey? How did you get to the uh, space where you are now? And maybe some mm -hmm. obstacles or setbacks along the way. Mm -hmm. So I think to even say how I got here... It's definitely not where I thought I would be because naturally we have a tendency to think we know in which direction we're going to go. I would say I got here by pursuing education a lot. I would say even though I really was not a schoolwoman, I continued to stay in school because I knew it would open doors. So I think the school piece really catapulted me into meeting people, opportunities, because the more I educated myself, the more I had self awareness of me and learned about other people that kind of brought me to where I'm at because when I ended up traveling to help in other areas all the skills I had been learning even though I was so annoyed with school and thought this is so much money we have to pay I don't understand when I was on the grounds and started doing work all of it started coming to me many things started making sense why I had done social service work why was I was doing therapy it's because it all created this um, bigger picture for me that made me say, no wonder this is so easy for me. No wonder I understand these concepts. No wonder I can move and shake so fast. Some of the obstacles were for me, I was a very loud woman. I've always been loud. Um, I've always loved attention. I've never had a problem with it. Um, I was criticized a lot for those personality quirks where why do you need to be center? What, what I realized is my big mouth, which obviously affects me in school too, played the biggest part in what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> Because of my loud mouth and my outgoing personality, I have been able to advocate for hundreds of women and be able to annoy people enough to get yeah. support for very poor communities who do not have a voice, be able to hustle really fast. So all the quirks that I had thought I doubted as a woman to say, well, maybe I should be more quiet. Maybe I should be more reserved. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Why do I like to be in front of people? Where is this coming from? All the things I used to criticize myself about really bad. I recognize these are actually my strengths and I just didn't know where to put them. Yeah. So one of the biggest obstacles was trying to be different than what was naturally for me. Now I have many other life obstacles. We all do. And I, and that would take, I could write a whole book about them. But what I try to focus in on is the insecurity of being okay with your personality. And for me, people who are very timid may look at you and say, wow, how is she insecure? I'm actually dealt with insecurity of just learning. Is it okay to be loud? Is it okay to be a leader? Is it every time you're the first one to raise your hand? Is that bad? Or is it okay? And so part of what I'm doing has really shown me that who I am fits into the world. 
I just had to accept that I'm a loud woman and that I'm a mover and a shaker and sometimes annoying, sometimes abrasive, but I get stuff done. And by doing that, this is how I finished school. This is how I've made a difference in the world. This is how I've made a difference in my life. And I, I truly believe the biggest obstacle is not being okay with your core and having other people tell you you should be different in order to fit into society and make a difference. That is so fantastic. So would you, would you almost summarize that unless you're very self-aware and understand your strengths, uh, it's very difficult to kind of define your own success? Yeah, I think had I not went into the field to be a therapist, I I feel honored that I got to be because it helped me recognize that unless you know yourself and you accept yourself. So if you're a person who battles with depression, for example, but you avoid it and you keep seeing it as this black plague that you have versus saying, my name is Amanda. I have this. What can I do with it? Yeah. So instead yeah. of running from being a loud woman, a depressed woman, an anxious woman, you say, this is a part of me. I don't like it. It's kind of here all the time. How can I work with this and still move forward in life versus being told all of these things about me are wrong? So self-awareness actually is the key part, I think, I believe, in survival. Because then you can say, yes, I, I know I'm being melodramatic right now. I know I'm having a bad day. And I'll be okay, but yeah. just be aware and don't be afraid. I think it's the, if you're more self-aware, I believe you're not as worried about what other people are saying because you already have the aha, I know. Yeah, I, got I, I know this. Exactly. You, know? you can't I tell me anything new. I, I know I have and, this. Yeah. And you can surround yourself with people who don't have that. You know, if I'm around another girl who worries as much as I worry, it's probably not always the best thing. But if I know I'm a worrier, then I'm going to keep someone close to me who's really calm, yeah. who can remind me. And then the day, and then she may have trouble speaking in front of large crowds or doing things. She'll call me and say, Amanda, can you help me with a speech? Can you help me do this? And we help each other. The premise of all of the self-awareness is that we need each other, ultimately. Exactly. exactly. And, that's and if actually you know what- yourself... That's what the Festival of Doers is all about. Yes. It's almost yes. like we women fitting to each other like a puzzle and helping each mm-hmm. other out. Yes. So just to finish off, uh, what would you give as your top tip for somebody who is who is kind of itching to do amazing things and maybe a little bit scared of the journey, but, you know, how to get started? I think. The first thing is, is that nurture yourself. I think people have big dreams and passions and life sometimes gets overwhelming. I think I would, and it might be that I'm a therapist, I don't know. But for me personally, if you have not checked yourself to see where you're at at this stage in life and said to myself, what am I living for? What makes me happy? What makes me set? Truly take care of yourself to learn who you are, not who other people tell you are, but who you are. If you want to be someone who makes, I don't know, collects rocks for a living. If you want to be a person who's speaking or a dentist or whatever it is, check yourself and say, am I happy? Am I happy? And then you may say, I don't know what makes me happy. And you say, then let's work on that first before you try to do X, Y, and Z, because you ultimately are the most important part of anything you're doing. So you, me, take care of yourself first, figure out who you are. You may have never even sat down and took a minute to say, let me just sit here and learn about me, where I'm at at this age. Right now, your life is important. So I would tell people, look at that. Look at yourself and go from there. Exactly. I think value your happiness and follow your joy. It's, it's such a wonderful advice. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. I'm really looking forward yeah. to meeting you in London uh, end of, Me too. End of Me January. Too. It's going to be awesome. So Amanda is going to be running uh, one of the three breakout sessions after lunch. And um, yeah, and you will meet her also at the Doers Village and doing the networking. So thank you so much, Amanda. All right. See you soon. See you.